Good morning, Oregon Moto John here. I wanted to show you that a rookie can change a tire. I've only changed maybe, I don't know, four or five of these in the last couple months. And I got this Tusk tire stand and some Motion Pro tire irons, tire irons, um, some Yamaha lube stuff. I've got, also got this other um, stuff to help hunter, hunter engineering paste that I've used. Pro, Motion Pro valve stem remover, Motion Pro tire irons, Motion Pro rim protectors, um, and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do this. I haven't videoed them before because I was pretty sketchy on my technique, but I'm still sketchy. But I wanted to show that watching I watched a video from Jay over at Dirt Bike TV, and I wanted to show that a rookie can change a, a tire after watching that video. So I've watched his video this morning and a few other times and i'm going to go ahead and show what this looks like it'll be an 18 inch okay so first here we are we're going to take this uh valve stem out and it's just a motion pro tool there's nothing to it you can get that anywhere okay then we want to take this nut off of the valve stem And usually we don't want these too tight because we want it tightened up against the valve cover cap because it can rip off from the tube. Now this is a KTM so we have the rim lock and the valve stem on the same side, which is a good thing, that's helpful. Some of the Japanese bikes are on opposite sides, which isn't impossible. It just makes it a little harder when you're putting things together, so I prefer this. And the main purpose of this video is to show that someone can do it with, with just some normal basic tools. This is just a tough stand, Motion Pro tools, and, um, and that's about it. Okay, the first thing we want to do is knock the bead off the tire. Okay, so we're just going to come down here and go all the way around the tire. I'm starting to sprocket up. Mike, when's the last time you changed this tire? Oh, it's coming off pretty easy. Two oh, years ago. Okay, this is coming off pretty easy. At first, I was like not sure. Uh, Mike's helped me today. I appreciate that. Uh, and so we're just knocking this off the bead. We're gonna go all the way around. Some guys use their hands. I'm using a tool. You can already see this is coming off. Kind of back to where we started with the valve stem. I'll use the valve stem and the rim lock a lot as my my reference. Okay, let's, let's loosen up pretty good. Um, actually, now we're going to flip this over. I start sprocket up and flip it over to the disc because that's the way Jay on Dirt Bike TV does it. So he's done lots of these. I haven't. Okay, so now we have valve stem or valve stem rim lock. And so I'm going to move over about six inches or so and... Um, and we're gonna start taking this side of the bead off. But I'm actually gonna knock this one off a little bit too. It's amazing how tight these feel at first. And you can get the, your um, wrench up on a knobby, your, and then it actually gets more leverage than if you were to go between. So get up on top of a knobby. That's another tip from Jay. And I'll link his video because he's a pro, I'm just a rookie, but I just wanted to show that with that it can be done, even without a lot of experience. And this is an 18-inch wheel tire. Okay, I feel like we're getting somewhere here. Okay, so now we got <clears throat> both sides knocked off. Okay, so get my orientation here. Here's the rim lock valve stem. I'm gonna move over a little bit, and we're gonna start taking this off off the rim now. Um, I am not skilled enough to not scratch this. I think I could do okay, but I like to use these rim lock protectors from Motion Pro, so that's what I use. Um, there may be a day where I don't use them, but for right now, I'm using these. And if you try to get your first bite and it's not going well, 
I like to go back and knock that knock that bead off on the opposite side of the tire into what's called the drop of the rim. You have the drop of the rim and it, it drops lower. So if you get this opposite side in, it's gonna help you get this side off. Okay, so I snuck this one in, kind of got to where I could get that up and over, but it's still not quite sticking. So I, I put another rim lock on and then I'm gonna let off on this first one here, get the second one in and then kind of do that. And then I can come up around. Okay, there we go. And now I can put these under the disc to hold that. Um, I'm gonna put another one of these in. Now, if you're, if you're better than me, you won't need these, but this is a black rim. It's a buddy's rim. I don't wanna get the tire on and have it all marred up. I remember as a, as a kid, I tried doing this with, with screwdrivers when I had dirt bikes, and oh man, I made such a mess. I pinched tubes and I did all kinds of stuff, so I do not recommend that. But I made such a mess of things, and so I kind of gave up on changing tires but um, for a while until I watched a few videos and I thought, you know what, this, this, this wouldn't be that bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and relieve some of this tension here so I can get a, a bite in here. So we're getting close, we keep pushing on this side of the tire, we come back and we work this in, and um, I won't say it's easy, but we're, we're getting there. So we just kept working this, letting the tension off, putting another tool in, and eventually we're getting all the way around. And we'll keep removing that bead. Okay, Mike, do you want to take that tire or want me to keep it going? So he's going to just kind of keep working this out, using the, working the tire irons around. And now we can use tire irons and just kind of work work our way around the edge is pretty easy and we're just going to go around all the way around removing those off and we're going to use the rim protectors and we'll just remove the rest of this bead okay so after a, a bit of a struggle we did get this bead off and now we're going to flip it over and put the sprocket side up again and now we're just going to take this bead off and so we're going to do the same technique that we used on the other side, but I have a feeling it's going to be, my limited experience has been it's a lot easier. So now we're going to go ahead and take this side off. We went ahead and we pushed this wheel down in the drop center here, which is easy now since the other side's broken. We got a couple bites here using our rim protectors, and then I'm just going to kind of push up. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab another bite here and get up and then up. And this is already going a lot better than the other side. So I'm going to stick this here. Grab a third tire spoon. Going to release this a little bit. Get another bite in there. And we're just going to keep working our way around. Okay, there, there it goes. It's already starting to come off. I can get this spoon out, and we're just going to keep working our way all the way around. And if you can't get your next bite in, take smaller bites rather than large ones. If you can't get your next bite in, then I like to release this one a little bit. I can get a rim protector in there, get a tire iron in, get another bite in there, and then you can work, work back. So that's what I like to do. Okay, we're working up a sweat. I would advise wearing a t-shirt. Um, we're, we're making our way along here. Um, I won't say it's easy, but um, we're getting it. I let this bite off, put another one in, not too much further. I even put some lube in here. So we're just gonna keep working this a little bit longer. I took and I sprayed a little bit of Yamaha lube around this last part of this bead and I thought it made it a lot, a lot, quite a bit easier and now we've got this to where we're just going to go around and take the rest of this off so that's just something I would I would suggest. This off we're just going to keep working our way around at this point there's so little tension you just kind of come up and over and then you know come kind of out 
And I'm gonna keep using these. And at this point, look, you can just pull this off. Okay, then you find the valve. Valve stem over here, and we're gonna try to push that off just like that. And you just kind of push this down, work your way around, and off it goes. And if a rookie can do it, you guys can do it. Notice the sweat, that's real. That doesn't spray on Hollywood spray, that's real spray. I won't show you the pits, but I'm sweating. <laughs> Okay, we went ahead and put this rim lock on with just two threads here so that we can push this in and get this depressed. Um, I did put a little slick spray on there, not a lot, just so this will be easier to get the rim in there. Um, now we're gonna take this, this tube out and we're gonna put this in here. Make sure we don't have wrapper in there. And to spread this tire, sometimes you can actually put some weight on it and help, help spread that a little bit. So we'll go ahead and get this tube up in there. And then we're just gonna put a little bit of air in there. So we're gonna put this tube in here and then we'll put the valve stem back in and we're gonna put just a touch of air in there, just enough so that it doesn't get too saggy. Oh, and we also inspected this to make sure that uh, you know, these are okay, that there aren't any spokes popping through, and by and large, it's looking good. We could use some Gorilla Tape. You'd want to make sure it was cut down to where it's the same width, not up here uh, where, where the bead's going to go. Um, but you can use Gorilla or Duct Tape. Um, so, the, this one's looking pretty good, so we're just going to go ahead and reuse it. Um, okay. Obviously, you put your valve stem back in. Your valve core back in your valve stem. And then we're just going to put enough air in this to, uh, i got my impressive air compressor here. Taking the ball needle out for inflating your kids' balls helps. And then we're just going to put just enough air in this to where it has a little bit of shape, but it's not measurable because it's so little. It actually will just help this from pinching. And you don't want it inflated full. Just enough to where it has a little, a little shape. Okay, we're really close. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with that. It kind of actually helps hold the tube out. Okay. Here we are. I've got an apron on now. That makes me more confident. <laughs> um, so. Anyway, tubes in, got a little bit of air in there, valve store core in. We're going to put a little bit of lube on both sides. I like this spray stuff, but you guys may have something that you like better. Um, I used the spray, the other smear on stuff, and it worked fine. I've actually done tires with it, changes with it, but I don't know. I just felt like it dried out fast, but I like this Yamaha mount lube. Um, it's easy to apply as long as you don't miss the tire. And now we're just going to go ahead. I've got this on with a couple threads like I was showing you earlier. We've got our tube in with just a little bit of air. And then we're going to put our rim lock there. And we've got our valve still here. So we're just going to kind of line this up. I'm actually going to pull this out a little bit to get our nut, nut on there. And we're just going to put a couple threads on. We don't want this to pull on that tube. If you drop and lose the nut, that always helps. Luckily we found it. There we go. Just, just enough to keep it on there. That's good. Okay, now we're going to start uh, working our way on. So now we're just pushing, you know, we put the rim lock in and now we're just going and putting this on the other side. 
Just step by step by step, working our way around to get that bottom half on the rim. So now we got the one side popped under. Our rim lock is in a good position. You know, you should be able to push on that. It should be still pushed out. We checked on the other side and it's inside the rim. And now we're gonna work on working this bead on next. Okay, we're gonna start with our rim lock here. We got it on the inside of the rim lock. So now I'm gonna use some more of this lube. I already did this once, but it's kind of drying out a little. So let's, let's hit some more of that. We're not right anytime soon today because it's raining. So we're just gonna go with this. Use plenty of lube. We're gonna start with the rim lock. You wouldn't have to use these, but I do especially when I'm getting things started. And we're just gonna start with the uh, with this rim lock here. Gloves are probably a good idea, but right now I feel like I need the feel with my hands. Okay, we're gonna get up and around that. I can see the rim lock there. I'm definitely inside of it. Um, and then you can see it's still pushed in. And as I brought that up and around, I could see that rim lock there. So we're in a good position with that. Again, you wouldn't have to use these. If you kind of learn how to use these, you can kind of get up and around. Okay, so here you can see, this, I'm glad this happened so I can show you. Look at that, I'm not, I'm not in the right spot, am I? All right, okay, so let's stop. Let's go back. Let's fix this, because that is not gonna take us anywhere that we wanna be. Um, I'm on the opposite side of that, so I'm gonna go back in here and we're gonna fix this. Okay, there, now we're back out. I'm gonna push this in. And then when I get that back on, we're gonna make sure that we're not on top of that rim lock. Okay, looks like we're getting in a better position there this time. If you don't get that rim lock in the right place, it's just, you're gonna fight it and fight it and it's just not gonna work. Sometimes you can get so here we are, we got the rim lock in and we're working our way away from the rim lock and we're just gonna work our way around the rest of the tube or the rest of the tire, making sure we're not pinching the tube, making sure we have plenty of lube on there. Here we are, we're getting close. We've just got this last little bit here. I'm taking short bites, about an inch or two, easing off with one wrench, getting the next one in, working our way around and I got rim protectors in because it's gonna get tight on that last little bit and um, Let's just finish it off. So we just pushed this over the edge and we got that locked on. So there it is. Now we'll uh, put some air in the tire and we'll, uh, you know, tighten up our rim lock, make sure this is positioned okay. And then we'll, uh, we'll do a front tire, I guess. So we did pinch a tube. That's good for you guys to see that, that that can happen. I haven't done that before, but it happens. So I always have a backup tube. Um, I'm putting in a, uh, I always have one of these on hand, these Michelin heavy duty tubes. So I have a front and back on hand. This thing compared to the stock tube is super thick. So let's go ahead and work that in now. Okay, so we got the tire back on, new tube in. You can double tube these, but I'm not good enough to do that. I'm lucky to get a tube in, especially a thick tube. Um, you can also use um, baby powder and different things in there. I have some tire talc here. Um, I, in Oregon, it's so wet and things get so... Yeah, just like, water gets everywhere. I've just... Uh, so far, other than me pinching a tube, I've never pinched a tube. So we're just gonna... We're gonna go with the moment of truth here and air this up and see if we... Uh, if we've pinched it this time again. 
And we got a decent air compressor. Got tired of messing around with my little portable one. Okay, it's holding air. We'll uh, seat the bead, air this up, and then we'll tighten down the bead lock. Snug, but not crazy tight. And um, yeah, we'll do the front. So here we have the bead is seated here up by the rim lock. Um, but as you move around, you can see where it drops in to the center and it isn't seated. So we're gonna, we're only at 18 pounds. We're gonna add some more air and um, see if we can get that to pop out. Okay, now you can see it's starting to pull up. We have the the bead lock here, here, and then it's starting to pop out. So that's that's looking better. Hope that shows up. Four. Okay, it'll vary, but we aired this up to 40, 40 to 45 pounds, this is 47. And now we're gonna tighten this rim lock and then uh, we'll let some air out and adjust the temp pressure. We'll let it sit there a little bit. Seems to be holding air. And you just go snug with these. You don't want to crank this down like you're in it to win it. You just, just kind of where it gets snug there, it's starting to snug up and I'm stopping. You don't want to crank that down like you're, you know, torquing something that needs to be really tight. Okay, now this is something I learned from Jay. When you put on your valve stem cap, you don't tighten the nut against the rim or else it can, if the if something does pull, it could rip your where the valve stem ties in the tube out. So you, you snug up your valve cap and then you back this off to hold it up against that to lock it on the valve cap. Like, like that. Okay, and we have this snugged up. We're holding air. While we're doing the front, I think I'll go ahead and just leave this aired up and then we'll adjust our tire pressure. And then we did flip around and we checked the bead on the other side too. And it's it's looking good. So just double check that your bead is seated. If not, let some air out and air it back up. So we're gonna do the front. Hopefully the front is much easier. Um, we're gonna obviously um, you know loosen this to where there's just a couple threads on that. We're gonna take the nut all the way off of the valve stem. We're gonna remove the um, valve stem core. And then we're just going to start breaking the bead off. And this is the front tire, so hopefully it's easier than the than the back. And, you know, I always have spare tubes on hand because, you know, if we'd pinch that tube, it's a it's a weekend, a Sunday, we wouldn't be able to get one. So always just have a tube on hand if you can. It just doesn't hurt. And this needs to come all the way off, you know, because this tire is coming off. So make sure you take your rim lock um, nut all the way off. Here's Mike. He's a pro. He's knocking this off the bead one side, then we're going to flip it over, knock the other side off, and then we'll flip it back over and start breaking the bead. So I'm starting with the rotor up just to keep track, and Mike's doing it. He's a pro. Okay, so we'll flip it over. There it is. And now we're going to do the same thing on this side. And then we'll flip it back over and start taking the bead off. We like to set a rim lock or a rim protector on either side of the rim lock. And then I like to take this tire iron and I just like to push down to make sure that that thing is loose. And then we'll start breaking the bead. But I like this one because it's wet. So, so Mike was just making a good point. This Yamalube works good on removing the tire. We like to spray a little around there. Um, but when we reinstall the tire, we do like this Hunter engineering paste it seems to stay wet longer so uh just a little lube talk um so that's 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 all we know that's something we learned today the yama lube does get stickier quicker um you got to reapply it more often which if we were good tire changers it probably wouldn't come into play because we get the tire on so quick but i'm not and by the time i'm working on the last bit of the bead it seems like that lube starts to get sticky so anyway Try different kinds of lube. See what you like best, but that Hunter Engineering is, is good stuff. So we did pull the other side off the wheel, and now we're gonna go around and remove this, this side off as well. I feel like when we start to break the bead where it's really tight, I do like using these, but once we've got the bead broken, I start to just go around the wheel without them. 
because it's not as tight. Now we've got this V broken here, or off wheel off the edge of the of the rim, and now we're just going to kind of get this off here. And I lift that up, remove it. I leave that one. Push down. Push over on this one. I'm lifting up on this so I can remove that one. And I'm coming over here. And I'm lifting up over here to remove this one. And that comes off. And I'm just walking my way around this. See these spoons? I got a lip. You know, you want to go down obviously catch that. And then that comes up. And then I lift up on the tire. Remove this one so I don't scratch the wheel unnecessarily. And take, if you can't get a bite, you know, take a smaller bite. And we could probably just lift this off, but... I'm just going to keep walking my way around since I'm basically there. And, okay. Now we are, we are off. I'm going to remove these tire irons. These wheel protectors. And we're going to put the valve stem and the wheel lock kind of across from us here. And we're going to push those out. The valve stem and the wheel lock and we're going to come down and off and off the tire working our way use the tube let's get that valve stem out get that off i'm just going to work my weight around this you can see it's coming off and we fought this front tire a little bit too this is a 21 inch, which most bikes are. You can see we're just working our way off here. There it goes. <laughs> we aired up this tube to make sure we didn't pinch it on the way off, but we didn't, so we're just putting this tube in. Uh, here's an alternate way to put the tube in that Mike's doing. It works good. He'll, he aired it up. I, li I like what he's doing. This is a good tip. And then uh, he put air, put quite a bit of air in it, and then we'll let this air out and just put a minimal amount of air in when we, uh, you know, put the tire on. Here's Mike putting lube on both sides of the tires using the Hunter Engineering paste. Just putting a nice amount around the bead there. And then we'll, uh, we'll line up the valve stem, get the rim lock on, and go from there. So we went ahead and put the rim lock on the front, just a couple threads to hold it on. Then I'm going to line up the valve stem with the hole, and we're just going to start putting this tire on. This setup, we got the lower rim on by just working it around on the bottom side. Now we're going to get this top top bead on the, the rim. So we've got these set up for our first few bites, and then we'll work our way around. Okay, so we've got the wheel lock here, rim lock. We make sure that's pushed in. So I'm going to push in on that. We've kind of got this staged where we can kind of get that in there. Just working our way around. You can see it's right there. And then we're going to keep working our way around here. We're going to push on this wheel lock. Yep, we're in, at least it's set up to be in a good place inside of it. You can see the wheel lock is inside of that right now. And then we're just going to keep working our way around. And I can let off on one of these and then go back. See, I'm catching the tube there. We're going to let all the way off. I'm going to go, yeah, nope, that is in that tube. Okay, now we're not in the tube anymore. We're going to have to go back and catch some of this. You can see it. It would help if we were an octopus. You have to get the tire on far enough to where this starts to pull in and we still have this inside here and you can see Mike is working his way around the tire with small bites and it helps to have three or four of these Motion Pro t tools. I've used other ones but these seem to work the best. If you can't get one in, sometimes you let off and then get the next bite and we're just going to keep working our way around the wheel. Okay. okay, we got this set up. We got the last little bit here and this should, this should be it. There it goes. Boom. 
Okay, now we'll just uh, fill this with air. Make sure there's no leaks. Once it's filled with air and we got the bead seated, we'll tighten up this rim lock. So I think we're, and I do find these helpful. Um, we haven't made a mess of his rims. Um, I think I probably would on the starting of it or the finishing if I wasn't using them, but I think with practice you wouldn't need them, but I'm not that good. So um, I think it can be helpful. Okay, we put air in it, we seated the bead. Now we're gonna tighten down the rim lock. We'll put the valve stem on, or valve cap on, and tighten the valve stem nut against the valve stem cap. And we'll put it to inflation pressure, proper inflation pressure. Um, we did check both sides of the bead to make sure it's seated in, in the rim. Okay, so here we are. We got a, my buddy's got a fresh set of dirt tire, tires going to Idaho and do a little Idaho action. He's ready to go and we did it ourselves. And we uh, we did pinch a tube here and we put use it as a way to get a upgrade to get a thicker tube. Have tubes on hand. It does we couldn't have done this without the proper equipment. If I didn't have a tire stand and tire lube and these motion pro uh, tire irons, I, we would not have gotten this done. I have even a few tusk uh, levers on hand. Once in a while we need an, an extra one. So an extra set of hands doesn't hurt, but you can do it. Take your time, um, take small bites, smaller bites rather than large bites. If you start getting where you can't get the next bite, ease it off, take a smaller bite, and, and just don't get frustrated. There, uh, there are a few times where it felt like this tire is not going to go on or off, but if you just slow it down, take a few smaller bites, maybe ease that off, get another stage, another tire iron in there. You need at least three of these, in my opinion. Many times I'll use this bead buddy when, you, when you're starting to get a bite on the wheel and then you can put on the opposite side to hold down on the drop but i had extra help today with extra hands i didn't need them so i guess in retrospect when you're changing tires um, i put the tires on this bike in addition to the ones we did today um, take your time if you start getting frustrated um, stop go get a glass of water or your favorite beverage you know, take a few deep breaths and then take smaller bites. Sometimes reapply some lube on the on the tire. Um, if you start getting frustrated, many times the best thing to do is to just just stop for a moment, and and it will go on. You know, make sure the tire is down in the and the drop on the other side. Um, you know, take smaller bites and then just start again. And they they always seem to go on, even at times when I think they're not going to. If I just take a little breather and go back at it, they. They always seem to go on, and there's nothing like fresh tires on a bike. So these are, I think I got about 500 miles on these, so maybe I'll be freshening these up. But they still have some life left in them, but um, I don't know. It's kind of fun to put tires on, but it does help. I got this stand off of Amazon, just put all my tire stuff on here. Um, I don't typically use these longer levers. Um, I do like the Motion Pro, having one bead buddy. These rim protectors, I think, are nice. Motion Pro rim protectors. Um, Hunter Engineering tire paste, and I do like this Yamaha um, tire mount lube because sometimes I need some lube that I just need to spray on there. I'm in the middle of it, and I can just grab it and spray it on and then keep going, so um, that could be helpful. Um, some people use these big tire irons. I have them on hand, but honestly, I'm always, whenever I get to where I'm needing these, I'm a little worried because I'm worried I'm going to put, probably have too big of a bite. Um, and I'm putting too much pressure on the on the wheel on the rim, so these are nice because I kind of you kind of after a while learn how much pressure you should be putting, and if it's just not going, usually my bite is too big. So those those are just a few tips. Um, take your time, um, use the paste, use more lube, um, and and be patient. And most of the time they go on. So anyway, hope this helps. Um, you can use talcum powder and some other things. To, um, Baby powder, I think it's a good idea. Double tubing Jay, dirt, dirt bike TV, has some great tips that I've learned so much from him. But I just thought I would show a rookie person using a Tusk tire stand and just some basic tools, basic knowledge. I think that's now I'm up to, I don't know, eight tires that I've done. So uh, definitely, if I can do it, you can do it. But just wanted to make a, a tire video. All right, good luck. Hope this helps. And uh, if you got some other tips, put them in here because I can definitely use them and other people probably can too. So have an awesome day and keep riding.
Good morning, Oregon Moto John here. I wanted to show you that a rookie can change a tire. I've only changed maybe, I don't know, four or five of these in the last couple months. And I got this Tusk tire stand and some Motion Pro tire irons, tire irons, um, some Yamaha lube stuff. I've got also got this other um, stuff to help hunter, hunter engineering paste that I've used. Pro, Motion Pro valve stem remover, Motion Pro tire irons, Motion Pro rim protectors, um, and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do this. I haven't videoed them before because I was pretty sketchy on my technique, but I'm still sketchy. But I wanted to show that watching I watched a video from Jay over at Dirt Bike TV, and I wanted to show that a rookie can change a, a tire after watching that video. So I've watched his video this morning and uh, a few other times and i'm going to go ahead and show what this looks like it'll be an 18 inch 